Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with a little inspired make today. Now, um, last week it was Creativation in New Orleans. It's, it's a big trade, craft and art show that travels around America. Um, and there were lots of YouTubes out about it, as there always are, because I haven't been to it yet. It's on my bucket list. Um, but I usually watch videos and there was this short little 12 minute video, I think it was about 12 minute video of Dina Wakeley giving a demonstration. It was it was sort of someone was pointing a camera at it. I will put a link to it below. It And there was just one little nugget in there that caught my caught my attention. Um, Dina actually made a little flip book for word. I can't think what it would be called a little booklet. And she made it out of folded tags and a bit of her tape down the back as a spine. And I think I might have seen Tim Holtz do one of these in the past as well. And it sparked an idea and the idea became another idea. And this is where I am with this. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to keep up this thing of using stuff that I've got hanging around to make something. So I have this box. This is where all of my gel prints that are on paper go to. Um, now this paper is let's see where's the original packaging it's this product um it's sort of a step up from photocopy paper i would call it more of a presentation paper hopefully there's something on there that will tell you what weight it is i think that's probably your weight there um yeah it's just quite a nice white paper I use it to print digitals on. I also use it for gel printing because I'm using paper. I found copy of paper just isn't strong enough. So I have this box with off cuts. And as you can see, there are pages in here that basically come in here because they need something else. They're not ready. They, they might become something in the future. So I went through this box and I pulled out 15 of the prints that were already in here. And here they are. So I've been through, as I said, none of them are what I would say completely finished. They are literally prints that need a little help. But I thought, you know what, they've been sat in that box for a really long time because some of these might have been, and that looks like it was a clean up from when I was doing gel printing. That might also have been a clean up. And when I was cleaning off this impression mat, I used this one. Yeah, I, a lot of these look like clean ups or in practicing techniques or... That one looks like it was purposefully done, to be honest with you. But as you can see there, maybe then I'm just cleaning off the plate. Anyway, so that's what I've used. So I pulled 15 of these out and I thought, you know what? Let's see if I can make, using Dina's inspiration, make a little book that could just be worth nothing. And I mean no monetary value so that I could maybe use it to play doodling with. or I could stick things in or I could try little painty techniques a bit like my dump art journal and i'll put a link to the dump art journal below because i can't put a link to a playlist i'll, I'll, I'll see i'll put something about it below just because in case you haven't seen it so i thought right let's work with these so i'm going to do this i've not done one of these before i'm doing a bit of a twist to see whether i can do what i think i want to do but we're going to bear bear all things in mind and see where i come to so these are a4 papers as far as i'm collecting considered here in Britain. I reckon you could do this with any paper um, size that you choose. You just need to work out your own dimensions. So all I'm doing is I'm folding my A4 in half, which gives me an A5. Now, I'm using gel prints. You could use, um, you know, when you're doing stamping and you have that piece of paper that you stamp upon, uh, you, stamp, you stamp off on, could be that. You could probably have some spare sheets of um, watercolour paper that you've been playing around with. You could actually make one of these with a combination of gel prints and watercolours and basically any paper that you think is durable enough for whatever you're going to do with them. Now, for me, this could even become a background for maybe glue book, like gluing cuttings into or put it just stuff so basically I'm, I'm am I saying basically a lot I feel I'm saying basically um what I'm creating is sort of an art journal ish type thing 
where all of the pages have already been started um, so that you you don't have to start from scratch you don't have the fear of a white pe uh, blank page it's it's already an art journal of sorts so sorry this is going to be a little bit boring this bit please feel free to fast forward if you choose to um, if you don't choose to then nice to have you along uh, what else could you use? Um, drop papers. Now, a drop paper, for anyone who doesn't know, is I work on a mat. Some people, like Darcy Sanders for a start, and I think both Patricia and Mariah at PM Artist Studio, work on a surface that they've covered with a piece of paper, usually taped it in the corner so it doesn't move around. And as they're working, if they're cleaning a brush or they're stamping stuff off or they've got extra material, they just put it onto the drop sheet. And the drop sheet eventually becomes patterned and coloured. And I've seen some beautiful drop sheets. And then some people actually turn them into digitals that they can use themselves. I know one or two people who have turned them into digitals and actually sell the digitals. Um, some people will turn them into journal covers. I think I've seen Gail Agostinelli do that before now. Um, they can actually be turned into pages for a junk journal as well so you get it whatever you want to put in um, as I'm using this as a pre-decorated background art journal I probably wouldn't put magazine papers in here music papers text pages unless they actually had some protection on them like because these have all got a layer of acrylic paint on from gel press my work on my gel plate. I know that they're sort of kind of protecting a little bit from moisture. So right, so that gives me the core or some might call it the book block for my journal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one of these together to show you how to do it. Then I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to do all of the others and come back because you do not need to see 15 pages glued together that would just be really numpty of me to do it so let's see let's pull in one of these sheets this is just a plastic like silicone heat sheet I picked it up on the internet I thought it was one of the Tim Holtz ones it wasn't it was a ripoff but you know what we all get fooled from time to time now I'm just using a normal glue stick to do this part of the process um because it's like a no value make it's using stuff up i'm not worried i'm i'm just trying to do the best i can with what i've got so i the important bit for me is to go around the edges so i'm going to go around the edges just to make sure the edges are glued together especially the spine and then i might put a couple of stripes of it in the center as well i'm not worried that it's completely and utterly and totally glued i'll get my next sheet and I will lay that on here or lie that on here and I will slide it so the folded edges are all together. Then I'm going to use my brayer and just brayer this down just to get this all nice and flat. You can use a scraper, you can use whatever you wish to actually smooth it out and this will give me my page. Now what I intend doing is I'm going to do this in groups of twos. And then once that's done, I'm going to glue them all together so it becomes a whole block of 15. The reason, let's take that out of the way. The reason I'm gluing them two at a time, then I'll glue the next two, then I'll do the next two. And then once they're all done, I'll then glue these two together. I'm sure you get the process by now. I do that so that the whole the whole form of the pages doesn't start skewing slightly and I don't realise it twisted off in a different direction. So bear with me guys, I'll be back in two seconds. So I'm back, I decided to glue on magazine pages which is why this is here. So I thought I'd jump in just to make sure I'm completely and utterly clear with what I'm talking about. So I've now created, I've got one page spare because obviously if I've got 15 pages that's not equally divisible by two. If I'd have made 16 pages then I could have glued them together. So what I've done is I've now got this scenario. So I've made all of my little pieces in up to sticking two together I've got them all here and then what I'm going to do and this is just just so you understand where I'm at I'm going to do the same process again 
but I'm now going to glue the pairs together. In the time it's taken me to do this, the glue will have set enough that it shouldn't move around on me. And again, as I said, I'm not going to be overly pedantic about glue in the middle. I just want the pages to be stuck together. So if I take this one, always make sure you've got the spines together and not the open ends, because that will be tricky for you. And I'm going to slide them together to make the signature. Let's get rid of this one. That can go into my glue page drawer. And I'm going to bray this down. Now, you don't have to bray This just happens to be me doing it quickly. Um, you can use a credit card, as I said, or a store card. So as you can see, I'm now building my pages. Because they're double thickness paper, they're actually quite sturdy. So I'm going to now go on and complete all of these. So I will stick these two together, stick these two together, stick these two and this one together, and then I'm going to stick them on here. OK, and then I'll be back and that will all be done. So here we are, it's all glued in. It's got quite a bit of weight to it now, which is really good. What I would say is I didn't check any orientation of pages, just making sure the spine was at the spine, the open was at the open, um, because they're all just generic um, backgrounds. I didn't have anything that was directional. If I had, I would take more care. What I've done is once you've glued it all together, I would say go along every single page and run your fingers along the edge of the page. The reason I'm doing this is not so much to make sure they're sealed together, but just trying to make sure the glue isn't gluing these pages together. Because you know what it's like when you use a glue stick, it goes everywhere. I mean, you could use matte medium for this, you could do any of that sort of stuff. I would also, during the course of letting this dry, just periodically check that the pages aren't stuck together. Now, am I, am I worried that it's not exactly lined up? No, I'm not. It, it is what it is. Just trying to let go of every bit of perfectionism with this. At the end of the day, it's just an art journal I can just throw stuff into. And I'm finding that if I, if I create things that have no perceivable monetary value, I tend to be more relaxed about my creativity. So put this to one side. We're almost done with that. We've just got a few more stages to go. So when it came to Dina Wakely... Dina used, um, she has tape and she had a strip of tape and she stuck it down there to hold it together. You could use duct tape. I'm not going to because I thought not everyone has duct tape. Let's do the best we can with things that pe people are likely to have, should we say. So I'm going to put a strip of fabric down here. And I'm actually going to use two strips of fabric in total. This is just a piece of fabric. I, don't ask me, don't know where I got it from. It's been in my drawer. It could be a pillowcase. It could be a piece of sheet. It could be any spare fabric. I'm just using plain fabric. You don't have to use plain fabric. You could use patterned. Um, I am going to use two layers of this. I'm just going to trim that much off because I know I don't need that much. Go back to the scrap drawer. Let's see, this needs to be straight. Does this tear? It does tear. Yay! So, right, all I need to do is I want to put a spine around here to hold these together, and then we're going to do a cover on the outside of it. Um, just tidy up this edge a little bit as well. So I need two strips of fabric about the same size. That didn't tear wonderfully well, did it? Am I shot? I am in shot. Um, I have in the past, if I haven't got stuff like this, I have used cotton handkerchiefs. There's always one or two hanging around after Christmas. Someone's always been bought a pack of handkerchiefs. Well, in my house they have anyway, so handkerchiefs work as well. So I've got two strips of fabric. I'm now going to be a little more picky about the exact length of these. I'm just going to cut these. I'm not going to tear them. Where's my fabric scissors? That's why I want to know. Right. Don't mind strings. Strings are interesting. Unless you become really annoying, but strings can very easily become very annoying. Right. Oh, I'm just going to my snippets roll. So I've got one for the outside, one for the inside. As I said, you can easily use fabric. You can use whatever you wish. 
Um, if you've got some flowered fabric or fabric you really enjoy using, then by all means use that. That'll do there. So now this is not what Dina did. This is my twist on it. So I'm going to put a bulldog clip at the top and a bulldog clip at the bottom just because it helps keep this off the surface of my mat, to be honest with you. Now, you could use PVA glue for this, which I sometimes do. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac because I've got it in my hand here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to put Fabri-Tac when it gets down. Come on, Mr. Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to put Fabri-Tac along the spine. Now we know that it's already glued together. This gives it added strength and I'm going to wipe it with my finger. Ladies with finger polish, be aware, it'll take your finger polish off. And then I'm going to put it onto my strip of fabric. And then I'm going to come in and press it in. What this is doing is it's reinforcing that spine, a bit like you would with a real book, to be honest with you. Now, these pieces here are going to end up being covered by um, the cover anyway, and I'll tell you about the cover in a second. Let's move that over a bit. Just going to come in with a little bit of fabric tack down here. This is probably all unnecessary. This is probably me just being overly cautious, which I can be. But that's kind of a result of my anxiety, to be honest with you. I, I overdo stuff. Overachiever there. All right, that's that side. So we've now got a bit of a reinforcement there. So if this book has been made for longevity, this gives it a bit more longevity than it had before. Right, now I'm going to take these clips off. And before I go any further, I'm going to go through one more time to make sure the pages haven't stuck together with me inadvertently clamping them together. Um, take more time than I am. I'm doing this in real time on a video. You can do this and leave this till the next day to fully dry and then work your way through it. Now, once this is finished, I will go in and round the corners because I like rounded corners. As you can see, they do stick together again if you're not careful. There you go. So this is now, I'm going to stand this to one side and let it stand and let the air blow through it. Um, and then we'll actually talk about doing the cover and how I've, how I've managed to do the cover for pretty much no money. So bear with me. So for the cover, I've used, this is a cereal box. Now what I did is I cut the cereal box to the same size as my pages and then I'm not going to do this on screen because I'm asthmatic and I don't want to do this indoors. What I did is I took a sanding block and I rubbed over this just to take off that that protective film on here which is why these look look like this because I've rubbed them down with the sanding block. If you're doing this I always say do it outside or in a well ventilated room. Um, I'm asthmatic if I have to do it indoors I put on a mask just because I don't want any fibers going onto my chest. Now, these I have also covered in clear gesso. I've just used cheapest chips gesso purely because I may want to paint, I may want to stick something on the covers. And if I do that, I don't really want it to be on a slick surface, even though I've rubbed this down a bit. I want it to be able to have some sort of tooth. Now, I'm not going to decorate the cover, not on this one anyway. Uh, because I can do it at any point. Maybe as I'm working in the journal, I can stick stuff onto it. Maybe as I'm working with scraps, I could get my scrap box and I could actually stick on or collage pieces on here. We'll see how long this video is. I'm not sure I want to be doing that. So I've got a front and I've got a back cover. Even if I left them as this, that's an entertaining cover. So, right, we now need to start thinking about how I'm going to do the next bit. So I'm going to use fabric again. I'm going to come in and I want this stuck on here probably by about maybe half a centimetre to a centimetre. Get off there. I haven't even put you on there yet. 
Again, I'm using Fabri-Tac. You could use bookbinding glue, you could use PVA. You could use whatever you know works for you in whatever country that you're in or whatever your budget allows. Again, because it's the way I work, I like to smear it out with my fingers. I do the smearing action because it means that any pieces of fabric that get absolutely soaked with the um, Fabri-Tac don't get discolored. So I'm going to press that down. Yeah, that's okay. Do I want to? I was wondering whether I wanted that edge left left exposed. I don't care about that. I'm going to stick something over the top. It may be in the end anyway. Right. So this is my back cover. Now I'm going to bring back in my the bulk of my book, should we call it. But before I do that, I'm going to put glue on here to actually just stick the back page to the book itself. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to use PVA for this. just need to put my lid on my Fabri-Tac. I'm just going to use PVA. It's in this container, by the way, because I had a big bottle of PVA and I just decanted it so that it's easier to work with like this. I also like to use a stall card just to smear it out a bit. I want to get it all the way to the edges. I don't mind getting PVA on my work mat because it's a water soluble paint. It does mean I can just wipe it away afterwards. So, can you see you can see? I'm trying to get it not too thick because the back of my pages are still only paper. They're not coated in gesso or anything. Right, that's there. Let's bring in the book. I'm just going to line that up top and bottom. I've got slip room, should we say. I would have slip room if I could slip it. Line it up, Griffiths, it would be easier. Right, there you go. So my back cover is now in place. Going to get a little bit of a damp cloth on that just before it completely and utterly and totally sets on me. So we've now got our back cover on. Make sure that all of the edges are stuck down. It's fully in contact, which it will. Over time, it'll dry stronger. You can see that now. When it comes to this spine, I'm actually going to come in one more time with Fabri-Tac and repeat the process. This, as I said, this is probably me just being overly fussy about making this all really sturdy. Maybe it's not a necessary step, but for me it kind of is. I like things to be solid and then I don't have to worry about them. Right, so I've now got my other cover. Remember, these have got a layer of cl uh, clear gesso on them as well. And that's purely because it gives um, anything I stick onto it, it gives it a bit of a tooth so that things will stick. Wipe its little nose. And just repeat the process. So this is something you could do. Say say you wanted to give the kids a book. Do you know what I mean? Just to do their artwork in. Or like me, you've got a ton and a half of gel prints hanging around. You could just use, use them for this. Or if you wanted to buy, say, a large pad of drawing paper or something and do this, I would just be careful that... Because you're using glues, just make sure that the papers are strong enough to take wet mediums because you certainly don't want to cause yourself problems. Pop that on there. Let's 
in there, make sure it's glued down on all sides. It is. And then the last bit is just going to fabric tack this down because, of course, fabric onto here, I'm not sure I would 100% trust PVA. It'll do a good job, but I'm just a little nervous about it. it over and pull it reasonably tight give it a bit of a reason to stick and then you need to be out of there because you're going to annoy me and i just got this little bit down here and then we're kind of done guys i mean as i said we've got um the option of decorating the cover in any way shape or form There you go. Right. I don't mind that I've got some overlap on here. I can easily come in and just snip it off. Doesn't bother me. Take some of those threads away because they will bother me. Let's have a quick clean up of my scissors. Quick clean up of this. And then let's take a look and see what we've actually created. And then I'll have a quick look at the time and see how long this video is and see whether I actually want to try and do a bit of a cover for you. So, so let's just make sure the pages aren't sticking to each other. So over time it will flatten out, I'm not worried. Why does that feel like two pages? Because it is two pages. Now, as you saw, when I let these sort of things dry, I stand them up and just let the air circulate. If you're going to take a little longer to make it than I have, then then all well and good, because it means that it's just standing there um, drying without you having any problems. But I'm doing this in real time, as I said. Right. I think I like that. So here I'm back again. I've rounded all the corners if you haven't got a corner rounder there is a technique for doing it um i will try and put a link to that video below as well i think it was i can't remember i'll, I'll find the video anyway um so as you can see we've made ourselves just a little arty journal that have got background pages in it now you could come in you could do borders you could stick stuff on you could do fussy cuts and put them on here it's just a creative space and because it's got no true monetary value well it hasn't to me because everything in here has been made of recycled stuff or things that were in my scrap box then this journal i have no fear of destroying it doing whatever i wanted it it's a good place to play now i did check the video so far is only about half an hour long, so I think I'm going to just basically come in and see whether I can just do some quick decoration on here. So I'm going to bring back in the scrap box, and I think we're just going to collage collage bits on here. I, mean, I don't even mind if it's one big piece like that, to be honest with you. I'll just chop that off. Actually, I'm not going to do it in one big piece. That's just being lazy, isn't it? So let's just... My in shot, I am in shot. That's just a little bit long. It's not going to go in there. There you go. Um, this little cutter, by the way, guillotine, this is the company. Got it on the internet. I'm almost certain it came from China. Um, quite inexpensive and absolutely love it. It's it's a brilliant little bit of kit. Right, I'm going to use art glitter glue for no other reason than there's no reason not to use art glitter glue on this. Um, I also want it to stick down quite quickly, so... You could use matte medium. You could use a, a glue stick as we've done with the others. I feel like I've had too much coffee today. I'm feeling a little over caffeinated, let's put it that way. But then life is busy. So I'll just put that on the edge of there. Oh, glitter glue doesn't really give you slip time. So... Make sure this is down. Now, I'm no one going to get asked, Kerry, would I actually put Mod Podge over this? Not really. No, I'm not, not, it doesn't. I don't think it would need it. Uh, it's not something I'm worried about. As I said, this is just a journal for throwing around the craft room, throwing into a bag when you're on the go. 
Maybe something you take with you on holidays, to be honest with you. Yeah, I wonder whether I'll take this on my holidays. So, I am going to go over the fabric because I've no worries that I'm sure the art glitter glue is going to stick it down. Those bits can go back in the scrap box. Um, that can get tidied up and used to something. Basically, just using scraps. What's this side look like? Yeah, it didn't look straight for a second. So thank you for all the feedback you've been giving me about my um, art dump journal, the journal I created basically just to play in. Everyone seems to love it and several of you have made it. As I said, there will be a, a link in the description box below. Um, everyone seems to love it as much as I love it. I'm really pleased with that because that's what I made it for. I think that can go on there, just needs a little bit of a snip off the end. I don't mind if it's got a slightly, oh, that was a good guess, Griffiths. So this actually feels like paper, not card. Maybe this was the age, edge of a book page. Doesn't make it any less qualified to do this job. So let's see, it's, what month is it? It's April. Okay, I have lots of big projects on the go. Um, some really big projects and I will announce them as I go along. So make sure you look out for that. Also, something that's going to happen this month, if I stick this down straight, it might happen. Um, that's going to happen this month, which is something I've not done. And I'm going to announce it now, but I will also announce it on my social media, which is my Facebook page, which is Kerry Griffiths Creative Designs. Um, so watch out. Oh, I like that one. Um, so watch out for this announcement because there'll be a link with it. And the announcement is you guys always ask me whether I will do lives and I'm not comfortable doing lives. We, we know that it just I find if I'm on my own, which I am all of the time here. Trying to deal with that much technology is a bit overwhelming for me. However, the lovely people at PM Artist Studio want to interview me as part of their designer series. So I'm going to be doing a live with them. And by that, I mean, it's going to be a Q&A. So it's going to happen if all goes to plan. It's going to happen on the 15th of April, which is a Monday. Um, I will post it with links and as soon as the link is up to the event, I will put it in the description box of this video as well. Um, so I'm going to be there. Mariah from PM Artist Studio is going to be asking me questions. We're going to chat about everything from products to inspiration to design to maybe my journey. Um, I don't know, lots, lots of stuff. And because it's, it's alive... If you're in the chat, you can actually ask me questions as well. Um, and I have no objection to that. That'll be fun. I, I think that I quite like that there. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be it's going to be something I don't normally do. So fingers crossed technology supports me all the way because that's Mariah is going to be dealing with technology because I just said to him, I'd love to do it, but I cannot I can't deal with all of the ongoing. So. Something to look forward to. So I will be. Oh, I'm going to have to put a tie on. I think maybe it's going to be an official. I'd say I comb my hair, but I haven't got any, so we won't do that bit. Um, so yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Just having time to chat with everyone that is going to be in the stream, in the chat, in the live, answer questions, ask questions of other people, which will, if I can, I will do. All right, let's see if I've got another piece here. Right. Oh, I loved this piece. This is from one of my digitals. Um, what's it called? I can't, it's something ferns, I can't remember. I'm terrible at learning my own product names. Feathery ferns, I think this is called. 
Let's just give myself a strip of this. So, so yes, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what else am I working on? I'm working on... I'm doing a swap and make with Mariah from PM Artist Studio um, for the month of April. So I'm in the process of filming that at the moment. There'll be either four or five videos in that series. Um, and I will launch all the videos all at the same time. As you know, that's what I normally do. Um, I think I want that bit off there. Um, so that'll be fun because what, what we did was Mariah and I sent each other a mystery package of things. Um, and then we had to open them on screen. Well, she she's going to open hers on... Ooh, what day is she opening it on? Monday the 8th of April. I've already opened mine because Mariah is doing all of hers as part of her Mariah Makes Lives on Monday. I'm doing mine as a video series, so I already know what's mine um, because I've opened the package already. And then, let's see what else we've we got in here. Do I like a bit of that? No, I've got a lot of red on there already. Let's have a bit of green, shall we? Um... So she's going to open hers and then I'm interested to see what Mariah makes out of hers. Um, it, it felt a little tricky sending stuff to Mariah because although I, I work with Mariah, I didn't really know what to send her. So I think I've sent her some surprises. In fact, I know I've sent her some surprises. I know for a fact I've sent her far too much stuff than she's probably expecting. But that's fine. She can share with Patricia. They can have fun with it. They can do stuff. And anything that they don't use, I'm more than happy for them to pass it on to someone else if they wish. Well, I've got a little tiny bit down here. And I've got this little tiny bit here. I'll just chop a bit of that off and fill in that gap. Um, so, yes, it's going to be fun seeing what, what she does with them. It's probably going to take... Mariah, two or three lives on Mondays to actually complete her project. As as I said, my, my videos are probably going to be about four videos long. Maybe five, actually, thinking about it. Oh, I didn't put green on there, did I? Um, let's just put that piece up there. So, as you can see, I'm not thinking, guys. I'm just just using up scraps. Just putting stuff down, just doing a bit of good old collage. Just trying to give myself a nice cover. Right, I think I need one or two little pieces more. That's quite cute. Mm, no, it's boring. Sorry, Mr. Indecisive here. Um, no, same pattern. So I can't really bring the box in because there's... Oh, what did I see down there? I like that. So I might go all the way up there. I know it's overlapping stuff that's already on there, but do I care? Do I heck? That'll be fine. I'm not worried about edges matching. I'm not, I'm just, this is what these things are for me. Because of my anxiety, um, because of my perfectionism because of my OCD all of those things over time have prevented me from creating in a carefree sort of atmosphere um, and by that I mean that as with a lot of us artists we're scared of failing where I'm also scared of being judged a lot of the time, um, which I kind of, don't worry, I've got over that quite a bit. Oh, well, that'd be nice for that fit there. It certainly will. Um, so a lot of us fear all of these things. And one of the things that I feared quite a lot is art supplies are not inexpensive, as we know. They're, they're expensive. And in my past growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. Well, we didn't have a lot of money. I mean, like a lot of us, we the money coming into the house paid for food, heat, clothing. Those were the priorities, and rightly so. However, what over the years I, I got into the habit of was making do with what I had. I really like that cover. 
I think I want this as the front while you start together. Do I like that as the front? I'm just going to trim these corners in a minute. Okay, I'm just making a little bit of... I really love that. I think that's going to be my cover. Right, I did pull out... Where have I put it? I have these blank labels. I think I picked these up in Michael's when I was last in the States. Now, they are sticky, but you know me. I don't trust the label. Well, I don't trust sticky anything. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on it. Um, so, yeah, I have found that if I'm creating stuff say in a posh journal or with expensive supplies, I tend to be a little timid in my creativity. Whereas if I, let me just put this where I can see it. It's that way up or that way up, let's do it that way up. Whereas um, if I'm creating them in something that really isn't overly expensive, I'm more free in my creativity. I think that's OK. I mean, that's that can just have a word stuck on it, whatever, whatever it says. So let me just clear the decks a second. I'm, I've got stuff all over the place now and I can't. I'm feeling a bit flustered, to be honest with you. There's just too much going on around me. Right. Clean that down a bit. So let's have a quick look. So we've made a spine. Now I could colour this. I could stamp this with permanent inks, as could I down the spine and the spine there. I've got a front cover, a back cover, done with the cereal box. I've got 15 backgrounds that I can now come in and doodle. I could glue book into onto. I could I could collage onto if I wanted. I could I could do anything I want. But they're already done now. Now these were not remarkable backgrounds, but when they're enhanced even more, say with doodling or backgrounds or borders or whatever you use in them, they will become something special. Could be somewhere I practice a technique in. I'm liking that. Oh, I just need to trim the corners around. So, so let's just see, what have I got to say? So, as I said, lots of stuff coming on. Uh, you will be having quite a few video series off me in the future because I'm trying to do bigger projects. Although in saying that a video series for me will all be launched at the same time because I know, because I watch YouTube, I know how frustrating it is to actually see part one, wait for part two, then by the time part two is launched, I've forgotten about part two. And on top of that, I forgot what part one looked like. So my my ethos or my way of doing it is everything gets launched at one go. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I did. It's just a little make inspired by Dina Wakely and and what she created with folded tags and a bit of tape. I like my version. Definitely like my version. OK. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Goodbye now.